Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life and welcome to the second video in the third Simple Little Life Build Along series. The first video of this series, we just kind of talked about the knife we're going to make. This is a little petty and uh, I kind of gave you the screenshot so you could uh, screenshot it. Uh, the download is available to Patreon supporters. I'm going to be using 1084. So today what we're going to do is go ahead and I'm going to take this template. I'm not going to use a paper template because I have a knife blank already cut out. Um, basically I'm just going to put some layout die on here, lay this on, clamp it down, and then we will trace it out, cut it out, and start our grinding. Now something I'm going to do for this project, and I've tried it once yesterday, stand by. I'm going to be grinding a 36 inch hollow uh, radius onto the knife. So this is a different knife. This is the knife that the, the project is based off of. And this here is actually ground in with a, a radius platen from Bill Banky. He's the gent who makes those really great file guides that everybody loves. And uh, he also makes a radius platen. And essentially instead of a flat platen, it's got a 36 inch radius. So it kind of gives you a really nice gradual hollow grind on your knife. And I think that kind of follows very similarly to the way traditional Japanese knives are ground. So they don't actually do a flat grind on their knife and I thought why not do that to kind of replicate uh, you know the goal is to try and get as close to making a really fine cutting Japanese knife as possible and uh, being able to match a slimmer grind is definitely going to help to that end having said that obviously you know you don't need that to make a really great kitchen knife uh, the idea with kitchen knives is you want them ground as thin as possible this is what I do for a temporary handle I've just got a dowel with a slot milled in there and then I just wrap electrical tape really tight to give me something to hold on to while I'm grinding. Also I talked about wanting to do a hamon on this knife and uh, I had a great conversation with Lucas. He's a great talented uh, bladesmith. I'll put a link to his Instagram in the description below and uh, we did a little video call and he was giving me a lot of great tips. So Lucas, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. He said just kind of a basic thing to get started with uh, a clay for a hamon is like Rutland's uh, cement. You know the, the fire cement you can get at caulking tubes and stuff but I just can't get any of that quick enough and I can't find any Rutland cement uh, locally. So what I'm gonna do, and I, I don't know if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try an edge quench. Uh, so essentially once we heat our knife up, get it up to uh, you know the upper critical temperature, past critical, we are going to quench it. But instead of quenching the entire blade, I'm just gonna quench the blade. Hopefully that will give me differential hardening, and hopefully there'll be some type of a line that shows up in the steel. I honestly don't know if it's gonna work, but uh, if it doesn't, hey, at least we tried, right? Always fun to try something new. So let's get started. All right, got my layout die. I'm just gonna hit this on here real quick. Voila. Boom, lock it down, take our scribe, and trace it out. And there we go. I've got a knife ready to cut out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get a hard mark for my shoulder there and to use that, cut the Bill Banky file guide and slap this on here. And what I like to do when I'm setting this up is to use a square, just to make sure I can get it really nice and square with the, with the spine of the knife. Something like that looks about good. 
check our square last one last time beauty so now what I can do I'll come in with a file and I'll just take those down and then we'll have a nice even shoulder that's square to the spine of the knife just using a round file because when I get to that shoulder I don't want to have any hard edges the theory behind that is you can have stress fractures I've never experienced that but I understand the theories there so not that hard to avoid it might as well And then one last thing I'm going to do is with this guide still on, I'm going to come to the belt grinder and just take a little bit of this thickness of the material down. So I'll grind a bit on this side, a little bit on this side, and then that way we'll have a little shoulder right there as well. Just to help get a nice fit up into our bolster. That's the benefit with using a file guide. Uh, you see we've got a really nice crispy line and that is perfectly flat all the way around. Next step, I'm going to put some marker on here and then we'll mark our center grind line. So some of you guys may have seen this. I did a video about making this tool. Um, this piece of aluminum with a hole drilled through it at an angle. I put a scribe in there and then at a perpendicular angle to this, I, I drilled and tapped the hole for this little knob so I can tighten it down. And essentially, just make sure our granite plate's nice and clean. Lay the blade down and... Uh, Run it along there. I do two of them and we should end up with two lines that are fairly close together. Now I'm not gonna grind all the way to those lines right now. I think they're a little close. That's probably about, I don't know, say eight or 10 thousandths of an inch. Pre-heat treat, I'm not gonna go quite that thin. And then also a lot of people wonder how I set this up. And honestly, I always put a little bit of, of uh, marker on the back and I just kind of test it, right? So I'll just do a little mark here very light mark there, see where they're at. If I need to move this up and down by moving it in and out, I can do that. And it's just pretty much trial and error. You kind of get used to it. I'm, I'm really quick at it now when I set up for different blade thicknesses, but I don't like measure it or anything like that. I just kind of do a little test scratch, test scratch, and uh, set it up. It doesn't take very long, and it works good for all different blade thicknesses. And here we have the radius pot. So you can see the difference there. We've got a nice radius on this one, and that will be what we grind to. And uh, it just bolts up onto my grinder, same holes. He makes a couple different sizes, and you can obviously just make your own brackets, uh, kind of modify accordingly. But this is a pretty cool tool. It's hard chromed, so it should last really well, should wear quite nicely. And I've only ground one knife with it. A Little bit of a learning curve, because it's, I don't know, it's just different. But once you get the grinds kind of established, it works fairly well. Obviously, I've got a gap here, a gap here. So I'm just going to loosen off these bolts on the side. And I just bring this out so it's nice and tight. So basically, we just eliminate the gap at the top and the bottom. Tighten it up. We're good to go. And I'll be grinding this nice, nice radius. happening very well for me today and uh, I actually actually ended up using a grinding jig oh, no he did yes yes he did um, sometimes you know grinds are, are happening well things are going good sometimes they're not and the one thing that I've learned is not to fight it I've tried fighting my way through grinds sometimes you know you know days when it just feels like you're not doing as well as you normally do and uh, that was the day for me. I did a lot of grinding yesterday and uh, my fingers are just beat up like crazy. So I thought, you know what? I might as well make a little jig. And so I kind of took an existing jig I had. I modified it so I had a little stop right here. It basically just tapped some holes and that way I could uh, hold the angle consistently. But you know what? I'm not, I'm not lying to you. I'm not telling you this all freehand ground. I can't freehand grind quite like that. I don't think on, not on this radius platen anyways. It's a little trickier than like uh 
uh, a contact wheel. Usually when I'm doing things on my 10 inch contact wheel, I'm always freehand grinding. It's just much more efficient and I'm, I've gotten really good at it, uh, but I'm still learning with that radius putt. And so I opted for a jig and it works great. So yeah, there you go. One thing I'm a little concerned about is that I've taken this to about 10 thousandths of an inch and that may, that may have been a little bit too, a little too fine. You know, this is new territory for me. I've never done an edge quench like this before. And that's kind of the, the whole part of this process, this whole project, this build along, is that we can all kind of uh, try new things. And if I just made this the way that I make all my knives, I miss out on a learning experience, an opportunity to try new things. So let's try something new. Let's try an edge quench and uh, fingers crossed. All right, so I just kind of scratched off some of the surface imperfections, and I think I think we're gonna have a hormone there. That's my guess. Kind of a cool one, kind of falls out line. We've got some major warpage going on. Uh, I'm gonna put in the temper now, but I'm gonna clamp it between some big pieces of 3/8 steel, and then I'm gonna you know actually use some clamps and temper it clamped. Hopefully that will kind of help take some of the wow out of it and uh i think for this we're just gonna do 375 for about an hour and then we'll check it out see how it oh man we got some waves we end up getting some waves along the blade might be able to grind those out might not but Oof. yeah you see that so you got some wavage going on that is because i ground it too stinking thin what a shame oh well you know what we can always <laughs> Hopefully we can fix that when we grind it. Maybe I won't have quite such a tall blade. Maybe it'll end up getting a little smaller by the time we take care of those issues, but. All right, so we've got this thing clamped in, and since my tang was so bent, I actually took a piece of uh, stainless steel foil and put it in on the side uh, that was touching. So I kind of spaced it out. You can kind of see the gap, and it's pretty much even there now. You see there's the gap right there, then there's the spacer, so hopefully, uh, in the oven that will kind of relax itself and who knows maybe we'll get uh, Maybe we'll get that warp out of the tang as well But uh, there's quite a bit of warpage in here. We'll see how this works. Hopefully Okay, all right, so we are out of our temper cycle. I did one temper 375 for I did about an hour and a half uh, the reason I did 375 is I want this blade hard. I want it to stay hard. Um, clearly, that uh, this didn't really do too much. The good news is I, I believe that the main portion of this blade is straight. This part here, really not too bad at all, actually. Like, I think that's pretty much... Yeah, this main portion is really, really nice and straight. It's just right at the tang, and it's actually probably right there that we kick off. That could be due to the fact that I don't know if these, you know, if one had more mass than the other, uh, as it's heated and cooling sometimes, it can kind of pull it in certain directions. But uh, we're going to straighten that out right now. This is our setup here. We'll stick the blade in. Right there, that's straight. That's perfectly straight, so it's not going to take a whole lot. But I'll shoot the camera down this direction and then we'll get heating it up so you can kind of see exactly what's happening. All right guys, well I hope this shows up for you. As we can see, we got that big old banana right there. So I'm gonna kind of set this in here and then as I'm looking down it, I'm just seeing exactly what it takes to straighten it out. And uh, I'm obviously a little bit over the other way now. But when we come in and add a little heat, hopefully it'll Remember. Maybe we need a little more. Oh, that, that that's look at that. It's totally perfect. 
Right now we're at 250 to 300 degrees. So we're not too hot. Uh, we're gonna go a little bit more because it's kind of coming back a little bit again. Don't wanna get too crazy. Pretty good. I'm just gonna go put this in some water, cool it off. We're, yeah, we're right around 350 there, so I'm just gonna cool it real quick. Uh, that is probably the easiest blade straightening I've ever done. If you look right down there, it is absolutely perfectly straight now. So that has me really, really excited. And that's pretty much how I use this thing. Very simple. For me, the key, a little bit of heat with this, uh, this is the Map Pro. Uh, gets a little hotter than regular propane and this trigger really handy for for that because you can just turn on and off and then again I monitor my heat with a heat gun just to make sure I'm not gonna lose my temper <laughs> lose my temper I'm, I'm jacked I'm so stoked nice and straight we can move on so now I'm gonna do some more finished grinding so we've got a little bit of pitting in here from our heat treat uh, we're gonna grind that down and I'm not sure if you can see the wave. Yeah, we gotta grind that wave out of there. So by the time we grind down, we may end up thinning this edge too much. Um, but if anything, you know, if, if we end up doing that, we'll end up probably just bringing this profile down a bit. So it won't be quite as high of a knife, but I think it's still gonna work all right. And uh, I don't know, let's just jump on the old grinder. Get this thing cleaned up. I think we're pretty much done with the grinder now. Now we're gonna move to hand sanding. I'm probably gonna make a jig, like a sanding jig, to match that 36 inch radius. It's not gonna be too difficult, and I'll probably take this, if I wanna get that, that differential hardening line to be really, really visible, um, I'm gonna need to sand this up a lot. Interestingly enough, I was just listening to the latest edition of the Knife Talk podcast uh, while I was grinding this, and they were talking about hamones, and then the difference between hamones and just a differential heat treat line and so based on their explanation I suppose and I would say I have to agree this this what we have here you can see that line right there uh, that's just a differential heat treat line right kind of from what they were talking about and the what Morocco Momasi had said a hamon is actually you know when you're trying to make patterns and designs uh, with clay using the differential heat treatment. And so that would technically be more of a, a hamon. This more of just a differential heat treat line. Either way, I think this is gonna look pretty cool. You know, just something else to dress up the knife a bit. Okay, for the sanding jig, I just had this ruler just as a little bit of a shim to get this. This is just a piece of maple. Take the flatten and then we're gonna follow this radius. And that is literally how easy that is to mark that out. Same thing on this side. And there we have it marked out. Pretty close. I think that's gonna work good. Real good. I'm gonna have to be really careful because this is like zero ground to zero. So essentially this is gonna be very sharp as we're sanding it so we're just gonna have to really watch out and uh, hopefully this works all right
tell me if you see what I see. Right there. You know, I thought that maybe this was too thin preheat treat, and it was. When I had those little waves, it looks like I actually I straightened them out a little bit with a hammer, just very lightly tapping on them, and I don't know if that's when the crack came in. Either way, I mean, this edge was, it was all wavy and cattywampus, so it's kind of hooped anyways, but you know what? I'm gonna use this knife anyways. See what happens. Uh, again, I'm just so pleased with how thin this is. It is absolutely, positively ground to zero. And it's not going to show up at all, I don't think. Because it's hard to get focus on something that small. But anyways, let's go ahead and slap this in the acid and see if we can get that hormone to come out. Or the differential heat treat line. Let's see. All right, so I went ahead and I sanded it to 2000. I'm using just a little bit of this uh, Autosol metal polish. I'm really not gonna keep a dark edge on the blade, but I just want, I would like that hamon to kind of stay there still. So hopefully we can just give it a light buff with this. Pretty sure this thing's gonna cut right now. Let's find out. Just gonna clean this up with the lacquer thinner. We'll call it good. Ouch. There it is. Again, we've not sharpened it, but it's just, it's like got nothing, nothing on the edge. Nice little shine, not overly crazy shiny. There's our crack. Oh, what a heartbreak, what a heartbreak. But um, even as it is, no, not quite. Not. We need to put an edge on it before it'll nicely cut paper towel. Whoa. For an unsharpened blade, <laughs> thing cuts pretty stellar. Just listen, listen to how clean that's cutting. Listen to this. And there is no edge on there yet. It's unsharpened, just stupid thin. All right guys, well that is gonna wrap up this installment of the third Simple Life Build Long. Really happy with the progress we've made so far. This is definitely the thinnest I've ever ground a blade to. Really, really happy with that. I'm just so disappointed for that crack there. You can see it. And again, I think the reason that that happened is because I went too thin pre-heat treat. I was about 12, 10 thousandths of an inch and uh, just was a little too much. I had those waves. And then one thing I actually did off camera is I took a soft mallet and I tried kind of tapping those little waves out and I don't know if that's where the crack came into play, if that's what cracked it, or if it was just the fact that, you know, as metal starts to do this, you know, it's stressing. And so maybe that crack was there before, I don't know. I never saw it off the grinder. It wasn't until I started hand sanding. I'm like, man, I got this one stubborn scratch. And then I looked, I'm like, that scratch isn't straight. You know, it's not, not like a grind line, which is always straight. It kind of kicks off a little bit. And uh, obviously it followed the little cattywampusness of that bend, that little little taco in the blade that we had. Quite disappointing, but I'm gonna use this knife. Um, I'm gonna sharpen it up. We'll be doing that once we get the handle on it. Usually when you make a YouTube video, you know the knives work out, right? Um, but I think this is actually really good. You can see, I mean, basically this blade is no good. I, I could never sell a knife like this. Um, I've never had a crack like that on the edge. Having said that, I've had knives that have gone really wavy on me and I just stopped at that point. I didn't try to salvage them, I just tossed them. And uh, obviously that's probably the right way to go. The one thing I'm really happy with is that this edge is really, really nice and straight. And uh, we got that tang straightened out there using a little breaker system, a little blade breaker. And uh, yeah, all in all, it's been a very fun process so far. 
we'll get a handle on this. I'm really excited to use it, and then we'll sharpen it up with some water stones in the next video. I'm gonna do my very best to get that out for next Friday, so you only have to wait one week in between. But uh, anyways, guys, thanks so much for building along, for watching these videos. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, and if you have not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. As always, I thank you so much for watching. Cheers. Thank you.